Welcome to Hari's Hobbies, the channel where we discuss the latest tech news and delve into the newest tech products. Today, we're taking a look at how AMD is actually holding back the Ryzen 7 2800X to compete with the Intel i7-9700K. But before we delve into that, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you guys like to stay updated with the latest tech news related to gaming and PCs. Well, if you guys didn't already notice, the Ryzen 7 series this year only has two CPUs as opposed to three CPUs that there were last year. So this year, AMD is actually lacking the 2800X. Now, this may just be because AMD wants to keep it simple and they don't want to make it a bit confusing like last year when people didn't really know what the difference between the chips were because they were pretty much identical in the first place. However, it may also be because they're keeping it in store for whenever Intel comes out with their octa-core processor later this year and so that they can compete with it and maybe even beat it. As for the octa-core processor from Intel, it is going to be called the 8800K or 9700K and it is going to have 8 cores and 16 threads but it is only going to be on the Coffee Lake platform so it's pretty much just a Coffee Lake refresh but with 2 extra cores. Also, you're going to have to get a new chipset which is the Z390 chipset. We don't really have much details about this new chip other than that it's going to be on the Z390 platform but considering where Intel is at right now, I think it's pretty much required for them to come out with the octa-core processor considering how much value AMD is putting out. And as a result, I think we can safely assume that this will indeed have 8 cores and 16 threads. However, it may not work in Intel's favor like they expect. With the 8700K, the max official boost clock speed is 4.3 GHz. And if we take a look at the AMD Ryzen 7 2700X, its turbo speed is also 4.3 GHz. However, it has two more cores and four more threads, and it's cheaper, not to mention its motherboard and CPU cooler. So as you guys can see, the 2700X is already in a really good position against Intel. The max boosted speed frequency that we've seen across the board for Intel is 4.5 GHz with their Intel i7-7700K. But that only had half the cores and half the threads. So Intel may not be able to deliver that much performance with the 9700K. And if you take a look at the i7-7820X, which is an Intel octa-core processor on the enthusiast line, then you'll see that its max turbo frequency is 4.3 GHz. And because of all this, I think the max turbo frequency that we can expect for this new octa-core processor from Intel is 4.3 or maybe 4.5 GHz. But that's pretty much it. And as a result, the Ryzen 7 2700X is pretty much identical with the 9700K that's coming later in this fall. Despite that, its price is much cheaper. First, let's take a look at the minimum amount that you guys would need if you want to get onto the Intel 9700K. So, first of all, the i7-9700K will probably cost over $400 because the 8700K costs $380 at MSRP and so it wouldn't really make sense to go lower than that. And so I would say it has to cost at least $400. It'll actually probably even cost like $450 or something, but we'll give Intel the benefit of the doubt and just assume that's going to cost $400. And then for the motherboard, the Z390 motherboard will probably cost at least $150. So that's $150 right there. And if you want to have a decent CPU cooler like what the AMD Rate Stealth offers, then that'll be about $30 for something like the Hyper 2 12 Evo. So the grand total for Intel is $580. Now let's take a look at AMD. So for their 2700X and the CPU cooler, it only costs $330. And on top of that, you can use it with budget boards like B450, which will probably only cost $100. Not to mention you can use it on even the B350, and you may even be able to pick up a mother for much cheaper than $100. But if you do want a decent motherboard, then I do recommend that you go with the B450 for about $100 or $120. So the grand total for AMD is about $430. Now, I know that if you were to overclock Intel and AMD past their max turbo frequency, Intel will most likely perform better. However, the 2700X is not far behind. It'll provide you with about over 90% of the performance of the 9700K, but it only costs 75% of the cost. So as you guys can see, AMD is just wrecking it with value once again. Now, so far we only just discussed the 2700X. So what if AMD came out with the 2800X? So first of all, the 2800X would at least be 0.2 GHz faster 
than the 2700X or there's really no point in even having a reiteration. So the 2800X should at least support 4.5 gigahertz and we may see anything up to like 4.8 gigahertz. So that would be about the range for the max turbo frequency for the 2800X. So on paper, the 2800X will be identical if not better than the 9700K. So people who aren't interested in overclocking and things of that nature can just go ahead and get the 2800X and not even worry about it. Even when overclocked, I think that the Ryzen 7 2700X will perform at least 95% of what the 9700K will offer. Honestly, I feel like that will perform 97% or above, or maybe even beat it. But let's not get our hopes up too much. As for price, I expect that the 2800X will cost anywhere from $350 to $400. But I'm leaning more towards the $350 side because of how lenient AMD has been in the past. So as it is evident, Intel CPUs have already been pointless for the vast majority of buyers in the last year. And with this new 2700X and possibly the 2800X, there really is no point to go for Intel anymore. So should you wait for the 9700K? Well usually I would tell you guys that if you really want the best performance and are willing to spend the money, then it's definitely worth waiting for. But now AMD has pretty much caught up with Intel and the performance increase is really negotiable. And so it really doesn't matter. And I really don't think any of you guys should wait for it. And you guys should just go ahead and get the Ryzen 2700X right now or 2800X if it ever comes out. Overall, Intel is already at a very devastating point right now. And if AMD comes out with the 2800X, then that's just a nail in the coffin. Not to mention that AMD is already planning to come out with their 7 nanometer process CPUs next year, while Intel has been working on their 10 nanometer CPUs for the past four years and they once again delayed it. But that's a story for another video. So what do you guys think? Is Intel actually done for? Or do you think they can easily come back if they just start offering their CPUs for more reasonable prices? Make sure to comment down below what you guys think because I do read all my comments and I'm curious as to what you guys think. So make sure to post your thoughts. Also make sure to hit that like button if you guys like this video and if you would like to see more videos just like this every single day, then make sure to subscribe. But until next time, bye.